The Making of the Champ, a stop-motion short film by Rosemary Trevally. When getting started on my thesis film for my final year in the Sheridan Animation Program, the first thing I did was to start sketching out random story ideas. Once the idea started to take shape, I drew some very rough thumbnails to help explore the story of what could happen when a kid meets his wrestling hero. With a rough story planned out, I then focused on developing the character designs more, drawing poses and facial expressions to help me get a better grasp on what those characters should be like. I knew the story would be self-contained inside the little boy Damien's bedroom and actually based the bedroom on the room I slept in as a kid. Here's the final designs for the characters that were used as design guides for the puppets. The next step was to flesh out the story more with better storyboards and then assemble them into a Leica with a temporary dialogue and music track. Happy birthday, Damien! Oh, wow! Yeah! I first made a rough guide of how I was planning to fabricate the puppets. This test puppet was made with wood blocks and screws and was covered in foam to test if the materials would be suitable for animation. I then decided that aluminum would make for better armatures for the Brent and Damien puppet since they would require a lot of high action animation. Using a to scale printout of the puppet designs, the aluminum blocks were cut with a hacksaw and the holes for the wires and set screws were drilled and tapped on a drill press. The holes drilled into the bottom of the feet blocks were shallow so rare earth magnets could be glued in, allowing the puppet to stand more securely. You can see all the holes for wires, set screws, and the rigging points on the completed armature. The mom and referee puppet didn't need as complicated armatures, so theirs were simply made from wire and plumber's epoxy. The puppet hands were all made in the same method out of twisted wire to resemble a skeleton that would later be covered in foam. The foaming process I used consisted of two types of foam, a thicker blocky foam and a thin foam that was wrapped around the thicker blocks. First the thick foam was glued onto the wire in the general shape and then the thin foam was spray glued on and wrapped around it to give the puppet parts better definition. Here are Brent's larger arms in the two stages of being foamed. The Brent puppet's legs and torso were done in the same way. You can see the size is reduced quite a bit when the thinner foam is wrapped around the thicker. Since the Damien puppet would be wearing more clothing, the whole body didn't need to be covered in foam. Only a little was applied later to pad out the shape of the body. Here's the mom and referee puppets being foamed. Large blocks were glued on and then trimmed down for a better body shape. The heads of each puppet started out as a sculpted head. They were then cast in silicone to make a flexible two-part rubber mold for each. Each mold was then used to cast a lightweight plastic version of each head. Here you can see what the heads looked like when released from the mold. The bottom excess of plastic is from where the liquid plastic was poured into the mold. It was cut off and then sanded down. A piece of brass stock was glued inside the heads for it to connect to the neck wires. The heads were primed white for painting and then along with the foamed body parts were airbrushed their respective colors. This is where I hit my major snag with this project. The paint wasn't sticking to the heads so instead, the facial features were sanded off, and I recast just the eyes and nose. The heads were then covered in some thin foam, repainted, and the facial features glued on. The replacement mouths were made from printable shrink plastic. Each mouth was designed at 300% larger than the desired size. When it's printed out and baked in the oven, it would shrink to the exact size needed. Pieces of metal were epoxied to the back of the mouths so they would stick to the small rare earth magnets embedded in each of the plastic cast heads. No, I'm the champ. For characters like the ref and mom, their costumes were sewn and glued onto them and not removable. Brent and Damien's clothing had to be removable to get at their armatures underneath if a part needed replacing. Brent's boots were made from liquid latex that the feet were dipped into and the bottom carefully cut away to reveal the magnets underneath. Damien's pajamas were made from a custom designed fabric. The puppet's hair was made in a process called needle felting. Raw wool is poked with a barbed needle to sculpt the wool into the desired shape. It was then glued to the plastic heads. Here you can see the finished version of all the puppets. After the set was designed, I did a color mock-up that would help inform the final version. The walls were made from painted foam core boards that were clamped to the animation deck. 
Each wall stood alone, so the set pieces could be moved around for different shots as needed. The props were mostly constructed from thin balsa wood, cardstock, and sculpey. The present box had a hidden magnet in the bottom to attach to the bed or floor and keep it from moving around. The opening shot of the film shows the bedroom wall covered in posters. Each picture was shot and then printed out on a small scale and aged. To add variety to some of the pictures, the puppet was shot against a green plate and then it was replaced in Photoshop. The championship bell was also made with shrink plastic. The straps of it have large wire twist ties glued in to make the belt more animatable. The bed was constructed with a thin metal plate sandwiched between two pieces of foam for the mattress so the puppets could stand up on it easily. The blanket had wire sewn in so it could be more easily animated. This is a typical rigged shot. The puppets are hooked into wires secured in the backs of their armatures and suspended for jumps or runs. The Damien's puppet rig wires were hidden underneath the clothing while the Brent puppets were exposed. For the rigged shots, first a clean plate was taken without any of the puppets on set. Then the shot was animated with the rigs used. The third step was to remove the rigs and rig shadows frame by frame by erasing them in Photoshop and then revealing the clean plate underneath the blinks were also added using Photoshop. I sampled the texture of the faces of the characters and made eyelid shapes. They were then placed onto the eyes of the characters in Photoshop, frame by frame as needed. My film was shot at Sheridan College in the stop motion studio. Each studio space was equipped with light blocking curtains to keep the set lighting consistent. This is what the studio space looked like before any sets and filming were done. Each area is equipped with a wooden deck, a digital DSLR camera and tripod, and a computer with the Dragon Frame software on it. This is what a typical shot looks like. For a close-up such as this, the camera needs to get in really close to the puppet. The monitor in the back shows a live feed of what the shot looks like. For certain shots, the camera was mounted on a salon instead of the tripod to get more control. This is the best birthday ever! Thanks, Mom! The end credits belts were also made from shrink plastic and were the very last shots I filmed in the studio. I hope you enjoyed this making of video. You can see my film The Champ at rosemarytrevalley.ca.